From 2024, all motorcycle helmets are going to need to comply with ECE 2206. Now, as it's a tougher test, that could mean that this, the first on the market to meet that standard, is technically the safest helmet you can currently buy. This is the new Arrow Quantic, and it isn't a pre-production model. It's one of the first to hit Europe, with them expected to be on shelves in May. So while a proper in-depth review is still a few months away, I've been using it over a couple of hundred miles to get a real feel for it. Remember, onlybikesocial.co.uk has a library of the most honest and unbiased reviews of all bike clothing, security, tech, and more. So check it out before you buy anything. And remember, we're not sponsored by anyone. We're not affiliated. We're not a shop trying to sell anything. We don't have to worry about channel sponsors. Now, visually, the Quantic is quite similar to others in the Arrow range and those from many years before. And some people seem to moan about that. But it comes back to the company's core principle to make what they think is the safest possible helmet. Of course, every manufacturer is going to say that. Uh, but the glancing off test incorporated into EC2206 kind of vindicates them. For donkey's years, they've been saying that a strong round shell is the safest design as it allows less energy to be transmitted to the skull and brain in a crash. We've seen MIPS coming in recently, which helps the helmet slide a little on the skull. But Arrow's design principle is to reduce the amount of impact energy that gets into the helmet at all uh, by making sure that the shell skirts over the ground as much as it can. Of course, this big wing at the back seems to go against that. But like all the vents on Arrow's for years, it's held on with a strong adhesive tape that allows it to shear off in a crash. And, it's not going to fall off, just fall off, you know, that's holding it by that and I've, yeah, I'm pulling that pretty hard and it doesn't want to come off, but the idea is, and obviously the testing, the independent testing has obviously shown that it's not a problem. Now people will sometimes point out that our eyes have got some relatively poor results in the UK government's sharp tests when it comes to side impacts. But a few years ago, our eye lowered the visor mechanism on its helmets to give a larger glancing off area. But this also means that newer allies get four or five stars on Sharp. Have a look and you'll see that there are very few recent models that have been tested. But the RX-7 is one and that's five star. As the interior and exterior shells are pretty much uh, the same construction on all our eyes, that Shark argument kind of doesn't really hold, at least until we see some more recent allies tested on there. That government department does buy all the helmets itself for testing, so you know, there's going to be limitations and also obviously the past year or so has made many things quite difficult. Anyway, I'm kind of conscious that I'm starting to sound like an AI advert and I really don't want to do that. Uh, so what's it like on the road? Well, I kind of feel like I should start with some negatives. So my biggest gripe is that this visor locking mechanism is still really hard to use with your right hand. Now when you're on, a go, on the go, obviously that's no problem because you use your left. Why would you ever want to let go of the throttle? But when you stop the traffic lights with the clutch held in, it can be a real faff trying to get your right hand around there. And that's, that, I mean, that's been a thing all the time on ours. It's, it's actually got kind of easier maybe with that tab. It's, it's a thing. Uh, you get used to it and then you remember to pop it before you pull up. Also, I'd have liked to have seen this chin skirt maybe being just a fraction larger and maybe a fraction tighter, but it's really comfortable. But at two points in my rides, I could just feel it shake a little bit against my chin while riding the ZX6R. Thing is, it, it was at a specific speed, at a specific body position on that bike, and it wasn't really that annoying. I mean, to be honest, that's it. Honestly, so far, this is the best arrow I've ever used on the road, and that includes the RX-7. And when I passed my test in 1996, a mate came with me to help me buy my kit, and I tried on lots of lids, and I really was trying to get the cheapest I could uh, that I, felt was decent quality because I just couldn't afford it but it was the Arai that fit me perfectly and it was the Arai that I bought back then and since then I've tested literally hundreds of helmets and while there are plenty of other brands that are just as comfortable now there's still something about the way that these fit my head obviously we're all different though so fit is the most important thing when you're buying any helmet at any price but the hard outer shell that I use and the relatively soft EPS liner does mean that they tend to have a better chance of conforming to an individual head shape than one, say, with a softer outer and a, hence a harder inner shell. Not my boss, Steve, though. He doesn't get on with our eyes at all. So you really can't generalize. You know, you do have to try helmets on. The thing I've found is our eyes have consistently fitted me very well. I've always taken a medium. There's never been any change. There's never been one that I've gone, oh, actually, that doesn't feel quite as right on me. 
Like the Profile V before it, the Quantic's got a larger opening than other Arrays, uh, making it easier to put on and take off. That was partly done because people new to Arrays weren't used to having to pull it open quite as much to put it on, it doesn't bother me, but on a sport touring lid that's probably gonna come on and off your head quite a few times during the day, it does make sense, and it it is a bit nicer to put on. It's the ventilation though that really makes this stand out. Starting at the front, uh, the chin vent's been redesigned and it's easier to open and close than before. Um, and it feeds air up over the visor and also straight into the mouth. Now you can't close that mouth section. It does go through uh, a mesh filter, um, but even in relative cold that I've been using it in, it hasn't bothered me that I couldn't close the vent. I'd maybe have liked to see a plug supplied in it that could be put in there if you wanted. But, you know, that as you'll see, there wasn't a problem with misting. So, you know, you don't, in my testing, you don't need to be able to open that. The eyebrow vents uh, feed air across the lower brow, across here. And this is a standard Arai VAS visor. So if you already have one from a recent-ish Arai, it'll fit the Quantic too. You don't need to worry about buying new visors if you've already got a dark one or a Iridium one, for instance. I like it. Now this is new for Arai. The logo's gone 3D and there's a vent hidden behind it. By reinforcing the laminated fibre at the front of the outer shell, Arrow's managed to add holes here without affecting the structural integrity. And this is a point that's most likely to be in direct wind when you're riding. And having it here really does make a big difference. It's, it works. And these two upper vents allow more air in over the top of the head. Then moving to the back, we've got an easy to use exhaust under the wing. This really draws air out of the helmet well. Even with the other vents all shut, if you open this and you can do it really easily, you can feel the warm air being taken away. And down the bottom at the back, we've got two more exhaust vents. It's fairly typical Arai. And again here, uh, this skirt's got an extra vent in, which should help draw a little more out of the lining. And the coldest I've been able to try it on so far is 10 degrees C. But with all the vents shut, it's still really still and comfortable without ever being stuffy. So, and I, you know, from experience, I'd expect this to still be great at much lower temperatures. Opening each vent individually, you can really feel the difference it makes, but none of them give an uncomfortable blast. And I'm sure you've tried helmets that you first open the vent, you're like, oh, that's good, that's really powerful. And then it starts to get annoying that you've got this wind blast on one point on your head. You don't, you don't get that with this. With all of the vents open, the airflow is amazing. And you're well aware of air moving over the head and out the back, but again, it never gets to the point of feeling drafty. You're not getting any buffeting in the eye, you know, fl fluttering your eyelids or making them feel uncomfortable. You're not getting any pressure points of wind. You're just getting this real flow of air. And judging by how cold it started to get while I was testing this in spring, it's gonna be brilliant in summer, especially if you manage to get some touring in down in Spain. Every lid needs earplugs, and it's the bike's fairing actually that typically causes the most noise, despite a lot of premium helmets being tested in wind tunnels. They test them with uh, unfed bikes, there's so many variables. But the Quantic's not loud at all. It also doesn't drag your head in any direction, despite that wing. And that includes when you're doing shoulder checks. So some helmets, you can kind of feel them wanting a lift at speed, uh, or when you start to turn your head, they kind of feel like they want to drag your head around a little bit. None of that with this. Also, the side of this hour is slightly flatter than previous ones, so it's easier to fix an intercom to, which kind of ties in with it being a sport touring focused helmet. And there's also this little pocket in the uh, in the neck roll, which you can tuck intercom wiring. It's a nice, neat little touch. Oh, and the cheek pads are removable uh, in an emergency. So if there was an accident, uh, the cheek pads can be pulled out, making the helmet easier to take off without moving the neck. And it's got a Pinlock Max Vision 120, uh, which is the top end Pinlock anti-fog insert. So, you know, this isn't gonna fog up. The fact that it's got a standard arrow visor means that it's got the same mechanism as other than the range, but honestly, I have no problem with it. It's not as simple to remove as a showy, for instance, but I really don't get why some people complain about it. And the benefits to me outweigh the extra few seconds it takes to remove it for cleaning. I love how there's no ratchet. So it's infinitely adjustable. You can just crack it open, off locked, uh, just to get some extra air going in there, or you can have it a centimeter open, or you can you can have it anywhere, uh, and, and it stays there. I get really annoyed with the helmets that won't let me position the visor just where I want it, which is usually open like a centimeter or so, uh, especially wearing glasses. While the visor isn't fogging up, I need it cracked open a little bit to stop my glasses fogging up because anti-fog coatings don't tend to work with coated lenses. So I just need that bit of extra air movement in any helmet. The color, well, I'd prefer white, to be honest. 
as the black details look stormtrooper cool, but I think I like it. My mate doesn't, but my wife does. Uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments, but of course it's available in other colours and other graphics. So let's have a look at this new testing standard. All arrows will be redesigned over the next couple of years to comply with EC2206, which might mean some nice discounts. But as I understand it, the only changes necessary to meet the standard are gonna be some small tweaks to the interior of arrows, if at all. And like other helmets, the interior is made up of several different densities of expanded polystyrene, but unique to our eye is that it's a one-piece molding with the different zones in key places within that mold. That helps with the structure of the lid, but obviously it's a more expensive construction method. And the glancing off that our eye is so proud of is really key when you think about it. There's obviously a limit to how much energy any helmet's gonna be able to absorb, but unless you hit something dead square on, there's a potential to keep a hell of a lot of energy out of the lid and your head if it slides through an impact rather than coming to an abrupt stop, which is why it's now part of the test method. EC2205 saw helmets drop down onto a flat and a curb anvil at 16.8 miles per hour with weighted head form inside. That's still in 2206, and the pass criteria of 275G and head injury criterion of 2400 is the same, but now there are an extra 12 impact points tested. There's also a higher speed test. It's only gone up by 1.4 miles an hour, but kinetic energy increases with the square of speed. So it is more than it seems. The maximum G-force remains 275, but head injury criterion increases to 2,880. And you can see in this video from our eye that it's RX-7 gave a total result of about 215 G in the equivalent of what is now the high velocity test, even when they are only making it and it needed to pass the original velocity for 2205. There's also a new slower speed test at 13.4 miles an hour, but the transmissible G-force here drops to 180, and the head injury criterion goes down to 1300. And finally, we have the new oblique test. And the peak rotational acceleration is 10,400 radians per second. And in this video, you can see how the helmet is spun as it hits the 45 degree angle, which is covered in an abrasive paper to, to make sure it grabs. But look at that hour result, about 2,750 radians per second, which is well off the 10,400 peak. Now again, I don't want to sound like an hour fanboy, and any brand's going to claim that they exceed test standards. You have to prove it. But remember that this is a result from a helmet that only needed to meet the less stringent EC2205. Our has always done its own additional testing as well, so there's a 17.3 mile hour impact into a hemispherical anvil, plus a penetration test where a three kilogram spike is dropped three meters onto the shell at various points around the top and sides. And that refusal by our eye to change things significantly does draw some criticism from some people, not just for the visual similarity of its lids over the years. There's still no drop down sun shield in any Arai, and you'll only find them with a double D fastener. Now Arai says, of course, that its helmets are stronger due to not having a gap between the inner and the outer shell. But we're gonna have to wait and see what other manufacturers do to meet the standards. I expect there will be sun shields conforming to 2206. The uh, visor on all helmets, the outer visor, is tested more rigorously now. It's hit with a six millimeter steel ball at 134 miles an hour. That any internal sun visors also have to pass new tests. Interesting though, the permissible transmitted light from an internal sun visor is reduced from 50% down to 35%. But it does state that they still have to be used with a clear visor, so it doesn't look like we're gonna see dark main visors become homologated. Photochromatic and liquid crystal visors, expensive, but they are tested part as well now, and they'll be allowed to transmit as little as 25% light under the new standard. Arrow's Pro Shield was its solution to a sun shield, but that hasn't been through 2206 yet. As accessories are meant to be tested for homologation, we're gonna have to wait and see what Arrow's solutions might be. Apparently, there are some interesting ideas in the prototype stages. Now, that thing about accessories is concerning. If a helmet has the option of built-in comms like Shoei and Shoeberth do with Senna, the whole package has to be tested under EC2206. And what that means for aftermarket accessories still isn't clear, but if the rules were strictly applied, it'd mean you couldn't fit a third party intercom or even a GoPro unless it specifically had been tested with every size of each helmet. Fortunately, there's a working group trying to sort that out at the moment, which includes Cardo, Senna and Midland, and hopefully it will get sorted because while most people will fit whatever they want regardless, it could have serious implications for intercom manufacturers. And if the worst happened, it could mean we end up without the choice. Overall, 
besides the worry around accessories, EC2206 is a good thing for us as riders. This is making for more stringent testing of helmets. But it's really hard to say if it's gonna make them more expensive with only one on the market for now. Still, there's the, the shift to all textile and leather jackets and trousers and one and two piece leathers being classed as PPE recently didn't have a noticeable impact on retail prices, though admittedly we did see some products drop out of the market. Still, there's a really good range of prices that have been tested and proven to meet specific standards rather than manufacturers simply saying, our stuff's safe. The Quantic costs 500 pounds in plain colors, which is 170 pounds less than a plain RX-7V, but it's 70 pounds more than a Chaser X, which is the next one down in the current range. It is really well made. It's really comfortable, on my head at least, and the ventilation honestly is brilliant. But these are always gonna be premium helmets. I've no doubt there's gonna be plenty of cheaper lids available over the coming months that meet EC2206. But for now, this Arai is the only one that's proven to meet that new higher safety standard. Now, I doubt anybody's going to be confused about this, but obviously the new testing standard won't mean your existing helmet can't be worn. If you buy an ECE 2205 lid in December 2023, you won't be breaking the law or in breach of your insurance if you wear it in 2024 and beyond. Most helmets have a recommended life of five years after you buy them, and it is wise to follow that, but just like the new test standards for riding kit, 2206 is just about making things safer for all of us. Also, ECE is a United Nations standard, so leaving the EU makes no difference to UK riders for this. Not that it would anyway, given that British standards are mirroring EC standards for obvious reasons. And finally, if you really believe that not wearing a helmet is the safest bet, then all I'd say is...